Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today I'm gonna be reacting to Anna Bay, which was previously the School of Affluence. Um, she posted this video last week and it got a ton of attention. I saw that Barstool said something about it, um, so I figured it was time for me to give my reaction. Before I get started, I do wanna say I've watched some of Anna's content, and as a woman who is very feminine and classy, I really like her. I like what she embodies. I like the fact that she is a feminine, classy, and elegant woman trying to teach other women um, to kind of embrace that part of themselves and that it's okay to kind of not be what every other woman in the world is right now on social media. As a woman, I can appreciate her content and where she's coming from. Again, just because I agree with one thing she says or some of the things she says does not mean I necessarily agree with every single thing on her channel. It would be absurd if you agreed with everything that someone said. So it's okay to have different opinions on things and still respect someone. Um, so please do not send any hate towards Anna. I think she's wonderful. I follow her on Instagram as well and she's very personable and you really get to know her more when you're following her on Instagram as well. I know some people in the manosphere um, have reacted to her before and weren't the most graceful or, or kind to her and that is something that I just cannot stand by so you guys know in all my reaction videos regardless of if I agree with you or not I'm always respectful because that's the minimum that you can be to someone so I'm gonna get started today reacting specifically to seven signs you're dating a loser so I'm just curious to see if these seven things are things that I tell you guys not to do or I advise you guys to stray away from. I don't necessarily love the word loser because I think what is a loser to one person might be different to someone else depending on your underlying values and foundation for your life. So just wanted to start by saying that. I know that was kind of a long intro, but when I do these reaction videos, I think it's necessary for just kind of prefacing the video. So let's get started. It is. Now, there might be seven signs that you are dating a loser. Loser. Okay, when I say loser, I don't necessarily mean a loser. Okay. To tell you the truth, low quality man was too long to write in the title. So let's keep it I simple it. by just calling him a loser today. But in reality, I'm really referring to any form of man that might not be worthy of your time, your effort, and your love whatsoever. Sadly, in our society, a lot of women are being desperate, a lot of women are wasting too much time on the wrong type of man, and in this video, we are stopping with that behavior as of right now. I also want to say that men are doing that too. I tell you guys the types of women that you should avoid the same way that she's telling women what types of men that they should avoid as well. So you have to look at yourself and think, would I want to date myself? And if the answer is no, then you might have some things you need to work on and that's okay. So if he wants to go 50-50 in the relationship, that just simply shows that he doesn't want to step into this masculine role, plus he is not a provider and he might not even be generous. So I don't know if those are the qualities that you want to work with in this relationship. I'm not forcing this upon you. If you are fine with this, then that's absolutely okay. No hard feelings from my end, but I'm just here to tell you that it's okay as a woman to expect that the man has to pull some financial load a bit more than the woman in the relationship. Sign number two, yeah, that you are dating a loser. <laughs> and that is if he makes you feel weird or crazy or a psychopath or clingy, if you want commitment from him. And when I say commitment, ladies, I'm talking about being in a relationship. Are we an item? Are we not? Or let's say you want to have an engagement, or let's say you want marriage, or you want kids, etc. There are so many men out there who paint the picture as if the woman is uh, this, this psycho who wants these things, that something is wrong with her, like, like stop pushing me type of thing. This is the thing. I'm not saying it should only be the way us women want it to be. If we want to give birth tomorrow, doesn't mean that that's fair okay but there has to be a way where we meet halfway this is the disadvantage of being a woman we have a body clock to think of it's we true. can't just you know spend 10 years waiting for him to finish clubbing and then maybe then he will decide if he wants to marry or not but again a little disclaimer there are of course valid and reasonable situations when sometimes you do need to give a person a little bit of time a little bit of space but this is where I'm talking about meet halfway don't let it just be how he wants it. Don't let it only be how you want it. It has to be an equal opportunity. That's what we want. A relationship ultimately is all about compromise sometimes. There are things that 
you know, you'll have to do that you might not necessarily want to do, but you do them because they make your partner happy and you love them and you care about them. Of course, there are things that are a bigger deal like moving in together, marriage, kids, and I would never want to pressure the person that I'm with to do those things. He should just want to do those things. So I also think it's important to make sure that you're with someone who has the same ideas of success as you, who has the same goals in life as you, who has the same values as you so that you have those underlying characteristics that line up. If you're a woman dating a man that told you he doesn't want to get married, but you want to get married, well, why are you dating him then? He made it very clear to you that he doesn't want marriage and why are you gonna stay and try to change his mind if he's made it clear to you? So I think it is important to understand the person that you're with and be very honest about your expectations and communication with them and what you're both looking for. So this is why on my channel I stress so much the importance of you guys being with a woman who has the same ideas and goals as you. Does she want to have kids and you don't? Well, that's not going to work out. I'm not saying you need to have every single thing in common with your partner, but I think there are some things that need to line up, like religious beliefs, political beliefs. Do you want kids? Do you want to get married? Like there are some big non-negotiables that I think you guys should be looking for when you're going to date people. And be clear and open about, you know, where you stand on all of those things as well. You don't want to be the guy that says in the beginning, yes, I want to have kids. And then you're three years in and you change your mind. Like that's awful, especially if you knew in the beginning that you really didn't and you just did it to kind of lure her in. So I think that happens sometimes, but I think that's why it's important to just be honest and clear about your expectations and be with someone who matches up with you. Sign number three, that you're dating a loser. If he is flaky, ghosts you, vanishes, or is completely unreliable, Yep, that's true, and the same thing goes for a girl. If she can't be honest about the way she feels or the way she doesn't feel and she's just gonna ghost you, loser, bye-bye. Same goes for you, same goes for women, that goes for anyone. Be a mature adult and be able to tell someone if you're not feeling them. It's really not that hard. Oh, haven't we all met this type, ladies? Now, this is such a classic scenario, especially, you know, haven't we also met so many women who are like, oh, I love him so much. So she basically accepts that type of behavior or she puts up with it because, well, I don't really have anything better going on for myself. Uh, well, I kind of like this guy, you know? You see what I mean? There is no excuse for a man to be unreliable or flaky. I need to tell you one thing, that rule number one in dating is that if he doesn't keep his promises, if he's unreliable, if he goes to you, then one time, okay, things happen. Second time, bye. Ladies, you don't deserve to be with somebody who cancels on you last minute for basically no reason or repeatedly doing this as part of his behavior. I mean, there are so many examples that I think we all have been through with flaky men and a man who simply gives us all these promises and then nothing ever happens. All these promises came because actually he had an agenda. He wanted to sleep with you, get you in bed so that you would uh, give him what he wants before he delivers his fake promise. <laughs> okay, I think I need to calm down a little bit now. <laughs> but this subject really fires me up. <laughs> like a firecracker. Let's just say exactly how it is. If a man is inconsistent, I really don't believe he's that into you. Like, okay, that's the cliche saying, but it really is that simple. A man who is into you, he is going to call you. He is going to make an effort. He is going to climb mountains and walk on seas in order to see you, even if it's a bit difficult right now. Yes, it's hard to meet high quality men. I get it because men are so spoiled today. It's, it's truly a challenge. But what's worth is settling for less. I mean, I'd rather be single than be with somebody who is really not up to the level that I think I deserve to be treated. Now, before we continue. She makes a good point there. And you know what, guys? The same thing goes for you. If there's a girl you're seeing that is canceling last minute, flaking at the last second, inconsistent, unreliable, isn't texting you back, she doesn't like you. She's really not that into you. If she only wants to hang out with you when you're shop taking her shopping or paying for a nice meal, she's not that into you, okay? It just is what it is. And that's the same thing she said there. 
there's some sort of hidden agenda there. And sadly, I think a lot of people do that. A lot of people in dating these days play a ton of immature games and I'm not here for it. And it's clear that Anna's not here for it either on the flip side. So I think that's actually a very good point. And again, just be clear about what you're expecting, what your expectations are, what you're looking for, so that, that other person has an understanding and you're not just like using them or playing games with them. That doesn't help anyone and it makes you look bad. Now sign number four, that you are dating a loser. And okay, before I say what it is that I'm about to say, I know that some of you ladies are going to have a partner like this. So uh -oh, my nervous. disclaimer is that this is just a cliche example. If he does some of these things, doesn't mean that he's a complete loser, of course, Course not but I'm just giving this to you as a guidance and I think you can also see that this is a bit of a metaphor for the type of persona that I'm about to describe so really here we go. Here. sign number four you're dating a loser if he lacks depth has no other interest than watch football drink beer play video games and watch porn Oof. obviously this is generalization this is stereotyping etc it's just a metaphor in this case this could be translated in all kinds of different shapes sizes and forms in reality all i'm saying that it's about a man who lacks depth so really what i think she's trying to say here is a guy who has no purpose no passion no goals and it's just doing like mundane things all the time do you guys know those people that think drinking is a personality trait. I went to college with so many people like this. Legitimately, they hate their jobs. All they do all the time is drink. It's miserable. I can't imagine living a life like that or being with a partner like that. I truly can't. So I feel like that's what she's kind of saying here is just someone who has no goals or passions or has no aspirations in life. And they're just doing like low level mundane things all the time. I'm not saying you need to have goals to be a millionaire. I'm not saying you need to have goals to start a business or do whatever, but I think there are people who, let me flip this over to the women's side for you. This is the same thing as a woman when you ask her what her hobbies are and all she says is watching the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and shopping. Or like all she does is watch The Bachelor and shop. Where's the depth there? I'm not saying you need to have interests like saving the planet or saving the ocean, okay? It doesn't need to be like wild, like world peace kind of thing. But I think it's important to have a little bit of personality, a little bit of depth, something going on in here and here, and not just focusing on what's on the outside here. So I think that's kind of the equivalent for women. Um, you guys know what she's talking about. I don't really think I need to explain it any further. This is what Barstool, Bar, I, the post that I saw Barstool do was actually about this point on her video and they were offended because all they do is drink and watch sports, which that's fine if that's what you're into. But as a woman, I would not be into a man like that. Just speaking for myself, I'm not trying to be a snob. I don't think I'm better than that. It's just not where my interests collide there. Um, I hate sports and I hate drinking. So I would not date a guy that was like, their whole world revolved around sports and drinking. But if that is you, then it's important for you to be with a girl who likes those things or who can appreciate those things about you. Cause you know, there's this stereotype that women or oftentimes women can be airheads, especially blonde women. So you know they say that Burnett. a woman can easily be an airhead, a down the bimbo, a blondie, you know, all of those horrible stereotypes. But come on, have you never heard about the fact that a man can equally be so? And the fact that actually in this world, there are so many of them. Oh yes, I have met many of them. They even exist in high society, believe it or not. First of all, I think we can all say that it's not very attractive. I don't really know what you're going to have in common with each other. I do believe though that since you are here on this channel, you're probably very elegant and cultivated and have a brain going for yourself that you don't really want to be with somebody who is less intelligent than you. Just think about what are you going to be talking to this man about for the rest of your life let's say you become married <laughs> i don't know i think life is too short to waste with the wrong person make sure you find somebody you have things in common with so and that right there is the most important thing she said about that point it is so important to date someone 
to be partners with someone who has similar interests as you. As I mentioned, you don't have to have every single thing in common. My boyfriend likes sports, but he doesn't make it his entire life. He also likes a ton of other things that I am also very into, and we have underlying common interests, which is incredibly important. I dated a guy once who we had absolutely nothing in common. I am very type A. A planner type of girl. I like to read and do indoor activities and he was very much um, spontaneous, skydive, let's go on a hike, let's go jump off this cliff and I am just completely opposite of that and that doesn't mean that he's a bad person or he's not great, he just wasn't great for me so I think that's an important thing too. Just because someone does things that you don't like or things that are not things that you're interested in does not make them a loser. It just makes them not a great match for you. So understand that as well. If you're a guy that watched that and got a little bit triggered, there are girls out there that like drinking and sports. I have a friend who her boyfriend is really into dogs, drinking and sports, and so is she and they're a great match. So it's really just about finding someone who has common interests with you. Don't, do not waste your time dating someone where you have nothing in common because it might seem really fun and exciting in the beginning, but you're gonna get sick of it, I promise. I'm number five, that you are dating a loser, and that is if he lacks any form of basic gentleman skills. And with gentleman skills, come on, I think this is very universal. We don't even really have to pay attention to cultures. I think that holding up the door for a woman rather than throwing it in her face is basic manners all men kind of know about, right? Or let's say as an example, you're walking next to the man and it's a little bit chilly, you're wearing a short sleeve top or something like that and it's a little bit cold and he doesn't offer to give his jacket to you. But one of the things that I see a lot, and this I think you also know, is when the man is so nonchalant, doesn't really care about his woman, he walks in front of her, he doesn't even wait for her, doesn't even look back to see if she's still behind him. You know, so rude and not gentleman whatsoever. It Wait, you guys, I have a really funny story. So the other day, me and my boyfriend were walking through downtown. We just moved down here and there were there was a couple on scooters. So downtown they have these like scooters you can rent. Um, and the guy was so far ahead of the girl that he was with, she fell, she literally fell straight on her face. Teddy and I were like, oh my God, are you okay? He did not even notice that she fell off the scooter. He just kept going. She was just laying there face first on the cement and he was just all the way down the street. Teddy and I were like, oh my goodness. I said, if you did that to me, I would kill you. Just kidding, I wouldn't actually, but I would be like, what the heck is going on? So that's just an example that just reminded me of that. That's so funny. Be a gentleman, guys. And you know what? I feel for you because there are some women that get mad when you do chivalrous things. And for that, I would like to say you're insane. If you get mad because a man opens a door for you or offers to give you his jacket if you're cold, you're insane. I'm just gonna be blunt and say it. I'm sorry, I have no, I don't understand you. There's no reason to be mad about that. You're insane. You know, small things like that that really shows if a, if a man is a gentleman. And you know, I, I recently spoke about uh, sex etiquette. When a man is selfish in bed, that's no gentleman. That's True. not nice. Especially considering how physically we are structured where, again, the woman has a more tougher card to play with than the man. Anyway, ladies, that was just a few examples of uncultured behavior from non-gentlemen. Give me some more examples down below in the comment section. I will be reading them all. Sign number six. You're dating a loser if he starts manipulating you. Once you understand Narcissist. that, you know what? I need to set some boundaries in this relationship. I need to reclaim some unfairnesses that has been going on. So he starts saying that you're materialistic, you're the B word, you're a gold digger, or who knows, maybe he says, be quiet woman, who do Whoa. you think you are? Sit down or go to the kitchen, go back to your place. I mean, truly, you might think that I'm joking right now, but there are many men like that. I think it is a war. I didn't think that existed until I started this YouTube channel. And I get some comments from men that are just repulsive. Just be respectful, be a gentleman. It is really not that hard. Like, 
I don't, I am not, a, I do not get offended. And even about the comments I'm mentioning, I don't get offended by them. It's just like gross. Like imagine telling a woman to shut up because she's a woman or that all you're good for is making them a sandwich. Like some jokes about that are kind of funny. Don't get me wrong. Like I have a pretty dark sense of humor. I laugh at things like that. But like just ugh, some of the comments I get are really sad. And on the flip side, women say some really horrible things about men. So it's just like, be nice to each other. Stop trying to manipulate each other and play all these games and be mean. Just be nice. Warning sign. If a man is uh, reacting aggressively, once you start setting fair boundaries, and when I say fair boundaries, because I know that it's hard to understand in the beginning, am I doing the right thing? Am I being too selfish now myself? Is this fair or not? But you really need to trust the situation and you of course can take some advice from your surroundings as well. But if you are setting fair boundaries where you are not being too selfish now you it's not just about what you want it's about meeting halfway that's what boundaries is all about and the man reacts very harshly very crazily i think you need to be a little bit cautious of what you're dealing with because potentially this could be a man that you should be stepping away from there are men who are just narcissistic selfish or too defensive or lack ability to do any form of change within themselves now i don't know if that's worth to build a future with so that could potentially be a situation where you have to choose yourself and choose your own needs first because believe me there are men who are willing to meet you halfway who are fine with certain boundaries in a relationship and who are not expecting you to be a doormat or to do everything for him or to be it all about the way he wants things to be be careful ladies again it's all about a compromise when you're in a relationship you are each other's biggest cheerleader you should be supporting each other encouraging each other and your partners you're both, you both have to bring the same amount to the relationship in order for it to work. So one person can't be expected to, to do everything and just pull around the dead weight of the other person. So I don't think that's fair. I think it is important to both be contributing. It's a two-way street. And the same thing goes for you guys. You shouldn't want to be with a girl who isn't bringing anything to your relationship, but expects you to pay for everything or do everything for her all the time or pay for her bills, pay for this and this and take her shopping and whatever it is, like she has to bring, be bringing something to your life too. And if she's not bringing any value to your life, you have to be able to walk away. And I think it's interesting because she's pretty much saying the same exact thing that um, Rich Cooper was saying in the um, how to test for high quality women video. If you say no to her, or him and they freak out that is a huge red flag it's important to set boundaries with the person that you're with and to watch how they respond when they don't get their way i think it's equally as important for you guys to look out for that as it is for women to look out for that in you it's a two-way street it's the same exact thing she said it differently than he did he said it differently than she did but ultimately they said the same exact thing Sign number seven, and the last sign that you are dating a loser, and that is if you are in a serious committed relationship with somebody who is still partying all night long every weekend Yikes. and cannot be without, he's clubbing with the boys pretty much every weekend. Now, okay, one thing is if let's say you are 19 years old, both of you are, you are also in that type of lifestyle, but for anybody who is kind of, I don't know, in their 30s and up, maybe even late 20s as well, I don't know. It's hard to put labels, but I think you all can understand where I'm maneuvering here. The whole point is, if he's in a serious committed relationship, why does he still need to be partying every weekend, every Friday, every Saturday, all night long? And especially without you. Okay, if you do that together as a couple, because you love to have fun, you love to drink, you love to dance, whatever. But if he has such a strong need to be Mr. Party Boy, and I don't really know what you are doing with him. It's just a bit strange that if somebody is in a relationship and still needs to be doing all that, it's a little bit of a warning sign. But again, people are of course different, situations are different. So everything that I've said in this video, of course, it might not be 100% applicable in your situation, even though 
know some of these signs um, resembles your partner. But think about, are you really being treated the way you deserve to be treated? Are you setting fair boundaries? You guys think about Are this both too? of you meeting each other halfway? Because that's what it really is all about. It's not just what he wants, it's also what you want. Don't forget that, my dear elegant ladies. In the next video, how to make him beg for your attention, oh you're going to find out exactly how to be the one that the man runs after repeatedly. So hop over to... I'll have to watch that video, I haven't seen that one. Um, but ultimately guys, I think I pretty much agreed with almost every single thing that she said. And I think it's very interesting because a lot of guys watch her and they get very upset when people in the manosphere who say the same things just kind of flip it towards women. Men agree with that. But I think they all pretty much say the same exact thing. So it's really doesn't make sense why anybody gets mad about it. I think it really depends solely on your situation, but I think the most important thing, like I've mentioned so many times before, is just finding someone whose values, goals, and ideas of success align with yours, because if they don't, someone is always going to be disappointed, someone will look elsewhere, and it will just be a hot mess. So finding someone who has those things in common with you, the values that align with yours and you know where you kind of want to be in life and why is incredibly important. So I hope you guys all found this helpful. I think it is always interesting to hear from a lot of different people in the YouTube community, but especially from another woman to just see if we kind of see things the same way. Um, I know that my content is mostly geared towards men, but I think that women could learn a lot from it too because I think a lot of my content and a lot of her content is really geared towards being the best version of yourself. And I think that looks different for men and women, but the advice is pretty much in alignment. So. If you guys found this helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys on there as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this video. I would love to hear from you guys on what are some signs that you're dating a girl that maybe isn't the best or is kind of a dud. Um, would just love to hear personal stories or what you guys think down below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.